Afflitas, Poston the Third, Senior Manager, Security Operations, and Tony Schwant, Senior Product Manager, both at Crash Plan. Uh, Fleetus, Tony, I, I know you guys have a great presentation lined up that I think Fleetus is going to walk us through. Then Tony's going to come in for a demo, then stick around for some Q&A. Holy, we have so much to do. Lots coming up. So I am going to step back and hand things on over to you. Uh, Fleetus, take it away. Thank you very much. As we will be continuing the discussion on data protection and disaster recovery, CrashPlan will be focusing uh, this presentation on the endpoint. So my name is Fleetus Poston. I am the Senior Manager of Security Operations here at CrashPlan. I've been with the company just over a year now, and I'm excited to discuss with you today um, data protection and recovery from an endpoint-centric point of view. So who is CrashPlan? We are a secure, scalable, straightforward endpoint backup and recovery solution. And we focus on four major use cases. So ransomware recovery, disaster recovery, self-service restore, and legal hold. As we go through our presentation today, we will discuss several of these use cases, but not all of them. But if you have questions about them, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to dive deeper into them with you. So let's start with the endpoint is central to all work. All of us today rely heavily on our endpoints to get our jobs done in a successful and timely manner. We store multiple different types of information on our endpoints. It could be a request for a proposal, it could be your board minutes or presentation, a lot of timely information that you would like to have access to in real time. And if you lost would cause significant rework in your organization, loss of productivity, and potentially a financial loss. So we need to take time to understand why we protect the endpoint, why we want to focus on these apps that are sitting on your box. So today, a lot of us work remotely. It's hard to separate your corporate life or professional from your personal. According to a recent study by one login, 37% of people who work remote have allowed someone else to use their endpoint, their laptop, their Mac, or their Windows. Think about that for a second. You now have endpoints that are being accessed by a non-employee. They can be downloading file. They can be accidentally deleting your files, corrupting your files. So it's important to make sure that we understand what's on our endpoint and to properly protect it. So you want to make sure you can get that proposal when you need it you can get to your board presentation. And crash plan allows you to have that peace of mind, that comfort of knowing that what's on your endpoint is properly backed up and can be restored when the time is needed if something happens to it. So the data and the endpoint is fragile. 45% of your business data is not stored in the cloud. So that means the only copy of that data is sitting on your Windows laptop, desktop, or your Mac. Think about that. You have a single copy of it. It's not stored anywhere else. Another interesting fact here is Harvard did a business study review and 67% of employees admitted that they broke their security policy to get their job done within the last two weeks of that study. So in a two week period, a 14 day period, 67% of the employees surveyed admitted that they circumvented the security policies to get their jobs done. That's a little scary to think about. So data vulnerabilities with employee transfer. So let's think through that for a little bit. You're hired on with the new company. You're giving your rights. You have the ability to, to see certain files. A recent study showed that most employees have access to over hmm, a million files when they're joining a company due to the way their access is set up. Inside the Financial Institute, 64% of financial services employees have over 1,000 files that are sensitive that they have access to. Let me repeat that again. They have 1,000 file, sensitive files that they can have access to. Data, it's important. And your access is important. It needs to be audited. It needs to be checked. So another thing, think about data exfil and data deletion. This could be malicious or this could be just you being forgetful getting busy, forgetting. So for example, I have a friend who was a designer a, and came in, got their new asset, sat down and wanted to look at the legacy files from their predecessor. So they launched 
They looked at the portal. They looked in their software and they could not find the data files, the source files for their, their projects. They panicked. They went to their manager's office and the manager said, oh, that laptop's already been sent to IT to be wiped. Luckily, this friend of mine was able to get there and to get that device before IT wiped it. If they were within an hour or two later, all of that would have been gone. That employee, that friend of mine, would have had to start from scratch from years worth of design work. For anyone who's done design work, that's years worth of work to still be done, not just years of data loss. Knowledge transfer. Because we're backing up files, because CrashPlan is actively backing up your files, if I change roles, you can just copy my working folder and give it to the person who takes my job or to backfill me. Or if I was to leave the company and I had working files that were only on my laptop, my desktop, you have the ability to move to them and just transfer it seamlessly to them without having to download it or find it. It could just be on their laptop. You could just point it to their endpoint. It'll be sitting in their C drive or in their documents folder on their Mac, and they can start working seamlessly. Additionally, this helps mitigate damage of files that were not supposed to be shared because if you're breached, you're able to find out what was on the machine. I'll tell a story here in a little bit about what that looks like, but think about that. You have knowledge of what files were present on that machine because we're actively backing it up with a crash plan agent. So here's that story I was just about, I was alluding to. Let's just say an executive admin is hit with ransomware. The executive admin immediately thinks, oh, there's nothing important on my laptop. I don't have access to customer data. I'm not part of our research and development, but the executive admin has been responsible for all the travel, the lunches, and other matters for the executive team at the company. So what they did is they created a spreadsheet on their desktop that had all the credit card information, all of their contact information, and it's sitting right there on the desktop. So as a crash plan customer, you would be able to know that now this user had sensitive information sitting on their box that you could start your fraud and identity protection for all these executives because you know that that data was leaked as part of this breach. So knowing what's on the endpoint can be just as important as recovering the files. Let that sink in for a second. Just knowledge of what's on your endpoint can be just as important as recovering the files. So let's keep the data off the endpoint. So your two options here are file or cloud collaboration tools and network shares. So cloud collaboration tools are those that you see, such as your sync and share. So that's your Google Drives, your OneDrive, and then you got your file share systems. Both of these comes with drawbacks. Both of these require you as the employee to follow policy. I've already shared earlier that employees are comfortable stepping outside of the bounds of their policy. They're willing to, to get things done just to get their job done. With cloud collaboration tools, they're convenient, but it's the opposite of a backup. It's inconsistent. The workflows may not be as seamless and the data stored is not a second copy. It's the document, it's the version. There's no versioning controls for you. So you need to be very careful with that one. Also, when you're using cloud collaboration tools, you're allowing multiple users to interact with that file. If the version is not set up correctly and it's deleted, you don't have the history of that file. And then the legacy network shares. We've all used them if we've been around for any sense of time. You've opened up your windows, you've gone into your drives and you see a letter. Your IT team has likely mapped a drive that's pointing to a, ne a network area, a NAS share for you, a network share. Your files are being synced by a policy on the box on a given interval for you. But many users don't ever check these things. They don't check to make sure the health of their sync and share is working that their, their, their drive is constantly mapped. And I've worked many instances where an employee may forget to check both of these and just lose the document because their hard drive failed, their laptop got stolen. And this is not a fun day for the employee. So back to that, with the crash plan agent, it's seamless, it's transparent to the user. They don't have to make sure it's collaborating. They don't have to make sure that the, the drive is mapped after monthly patching or after a vacation, or after a refresh. So what about policies and training? We've talked about those a little bit already. Most people 
know what the right path to take is, but they often take the lesser of the two for the more direct. So what that means is if your policies and procedures require the user to do something, if it slows productivity, they're not going to do it. They're going to choose the least resistance. And that's what we talked about earlier, where they're going to circumvent your controls to make sure that they're getting their job done in a timely manner that doesn't impact their productivity. So we need to build the right path. We need to remove those shortcuts and make it the path. So what that means is we need to make disaster recovery and data protection seamless, transparent, and automatic for the users. CrashPlan does this. We have the ability to drop the agent or to install the agent on your box, let the user start working, and then within minutes, the files are, are, are back on their box when they have a hardware refresh. Or every 15 minutes, as long as you're internet connected, your files are being synced back up. So if and when you need that file, you have access to it. You have a peace of mind. So I alluded to these already, the automatic collection. When you set up, your admin sets up what paths they want to, to collect. If it's your desktop, your downloads, your whatever is automatically there. This is done transparently to the end user. Another value of CrashPlan is we truly allow unlimited backup. So every version of that file is sitting in our product. So if you get ransomed on today and you need, you know that your last backup was an hour ago of that file because that's when you last touched it, you can roll back to that file. You can restore to just that point and know that you have a valid file. We support Mac, Windows, and Linux. So you can choose the operating system that you're most comfortable with and back up your files. I've alluded to the self-service. You're going to see in the demo here shortly by Tony, our senior product manager, what it is if you need that file. So you've lost that presentation because your hard drive failed, you spilled that cup of coffee on your laptop this morning and it's no longer there. You can restore that presentation after you install the crash plan on your new agent and be right back up and running. And it meets the employees where they're at, where they're working. Very little work and you're meeting the employees where they work. So Schrodinger's cat, the only way to describe the cat in the box is both dead and alive. It goes the same way for your data. It's not the backup that it's important, it's a validated recovery. So you need to know that at any given time you have a backup. So I challenge you all to go restore a file that you've backed up. Make sure you first have a copy of it, second that you can restore it, and it's the right version that you expect to restore. Because until you've validated your backup with a validated recovery, you're just hoping for the best. So I challenge each and every one of you to think through, are you backing up and can you restore? And if you restore, is it the, what you expected to restore? Is it the full file? Is it the full presentation? Is it actually that bit, that proposal that you plan to present? So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tony Swamp, our senior product manager, who's been with CrashPlan for over a decade to give you a demo of our product. And we look forward to your questions. All right. Thank you, Felitas. Excited to be here and kind of show off uh, CrashPlan and what it can do. So uh, what I have up here is the CrashPlan agent, and uh, that gets installed on uh, your employees' endpoints. And uh, really, this is a convenience factor for them and the one of our main uh, value props for end users. So say your top salesperson downloads a customer PowerPoint deck uh, before a customer on-site because they know they'll have spotty, spotty internet access. And to Fleetus' point earlier, uh, even though this is against policy, she needs to get the presentation done, so she just goes ahead and does it. So she downloads it, she works on it in the airport, the hotel lobby, uploads all the, uh, updates all the customer-specific data, and even starts on a new customer's uh, slide deck. Uh, goes to bed, wakes up in the morning, and realizes she completely saved the new customer's deck over the old one. So uh, in the sync and share world, it's an IT ticket. It's trying to figure out where that file is, how to get it back. Uh, with CrashPlan, it's just as easy as restore the files. Uh, I know it was in my downloads. Uh, there it is and click on that little clock icon, and you can see all of the various versions that have been backed up. 
Uh, it completely backs up in uh, the background, uh, totally invisible to the end user whenever they or whenever they get internet access, it, it backs up that new version. So it's easy to just select that one looks like the right one. And then I'm going to restore it to my desktop and rename it so I'm not overwriting anything. I can check it out before I before I actually uh, need it. So this is great from the end, user, end user's perspective. I don't need to involve IT. I don't need to really do anything except open a program and uh, download that that latest version. So the same thing happens with, uh, or the same thing, same process works for uh, malware, accidental deletions, uh, really anything that happens to uh, the end user's device up into and including hardware failure. Log in on a new device, uh, same username, password, and uh, restore all the data that you need. So that is the uh, end user's perspective. And from the admin perspective, there we go. All right, from the uh, admin user's perspective, uh, the same thing can be done from here. Navigating to the user's device, hitting restore, and there's all their, uh, all their files. They can select the files they need uh, and select where to, uh, where to restore that data. Uh, with all the same options. But for admins and security professionals, uh, the use cases go a little bit further than just purely restoring the data. So uh, we had a client or we had a customer who uh, suffered a break in and actually about a dozen of their laptops got stolen. And through their process of investigation, they realized that one of the laptops hadn't been registered with their MDM and therefore was not encrypted. So they had a uh, data spillage event they needed to uh, disclose to the people or disclose to their customers that it may have that their information may have been compromised. However, with CrashPlan, it was installed and they were able to go through and search for uh, files that may have contained that information selected them, restored them down to uh, the investigator's machine, opened them up, and specifically were able to find what exact information was uh, may have been leaked, what exact customers were uh, would have been uh, impacted, and they could target their communications to those specific customers, and they could tell them exactly what was uh, what was impacted. And so that limits the disclosure and uh, the PR ramifications uh, there. And so that's just kind of some additional use cases that the admin and security uh, teams find valuable with, uh, with CrashPlan. And so that is really the, uh, the demo that uh, I want to show you. So uh, Jess, do you have any any questions from the audience? Yeah, we have a bunch of questions coming in. That was so great. What a, I like a short and punchy demo, like right into it, Tony. That was great. Uh, okay, well, let's get into some audience questions here. I'm going to start with this one. Um, are crash plans versions capable of being used for very strict data retention policies or discovery? Uh, yes, actually. So we do have uh, our legal hold matters or our legal hold module uh, integrated with the product here. So uh, through the preservation policy, the legal team can collect additional files, uh, additional versions, uh, save deleted files forever. And so they can really ratchet up what is being kept. Uh, and that's completely separate from the IT side of things. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they add somebody to uh, a matter, they add the custodian, they have the number of devices, they're automatically starting to, to do that broad capture. And so when uh, that data is needed, if that data is needed, they can sit here or they, the legal team can go in themselves, uh, click the get files button and are they're prompted with that same restore dialogue that we saw before where they can go through and select what they need, where they need it, 
uh, and restore the original permissions and metadata for those files as well. Hmm. I like that customization, getting only what you need when you need it. Um, okay, we're going to try to squeeze in one more question here as we get to the end of our time. Uh, what security measures does CrashPlan employ to protect data during backup and transmission? And how does it ensure data integrity and privacy? That's a good question. What do you got for us, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so CrashPlan does use AES-256 encryption for the blocks as well as the uh, transmission or TLS uh, 1.2 SSL encryption. Mm -hmm. um, the integrity is uh, checked. So CrashPlan does all of the uh, the deduplication, encryption, compression client side. So all of that is done before that block of data ever leaves your computer. Uh, and, in, and in terms of the integrity piece, we check some of the block. And then when we send it up, that checksum gets uh, validated on our storage server side uh, in order to make sure that it was transferred correctly. And then uh, every few days or uh, on a schedule, we have uh, what we call archive maintenance, where the storage server goes through and double checks that the blocks are still there to protect against uh, bit rot or anything like that. Uh, and if it finds that a file is damaged, it removes it from the manifest and re-requests it from the uh, from the endpoint. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, Tony, I wish we could keep going, but we are getting pretty close to the end of time here. So I think we're going to have to wrap it up. But before we let you go, for anyone out there that uh, just fell head over heels in love with Crash Plan, and I think between you and Fleetus, you've made quite the pitch for that. Uh, what do you recommend as their first step to getting started? Uh, first step to getting started is just go to our website, uh, crashplan.com. So we've got white papers. You can request a demo, get in contact with us, and we'd be happy to, to give you a deeper dive. Awesome. All right. Well, a big thank you to Fleetus. A big thank you to you. Uh, this has been such a great chat, a really interesting look inside Crash Plan. I appreciate your time today, Tony. Thanks.